In this video, we're going to look at how to add a sketch and tune effect to shapes in After Effects. Hi, I'm Adam Bennett. This is the video shop. First off, this isn't a tutorial. It's more of a project walkthrough. If you visit the link below, you'll see there are a number of project files. There's one for each shape and a master file where I've cobbled a load together to create this scene here. I've created a rig for each shape to get a 3D stroke effect and this posterized shading. There's no fancy animation and some of these rigs are pretty hacky. I'll be totally honest, it's more like a presentation of a noble failure. I tried to hack After Effects to achieve a sketch and tune look and well, I struggled. You're pathetic! But if this looks like something you might find useful, stay tuned. A while ago, I wanted to see if I could animate something similar to this by Fabrizio Mora. It was already animated, but I'm sure he won't mind me saying the animation's pretty simple. You bastard! What I mean is he wasn't setting out to do a complicated animation with the shapes. Go to hell! I was interested in seeing if it could be done procedurally, so the shapes are 3D assets and you have full control to be able to rotate and adjust them while still maintaining the overall look. I spent a bit of time experimenting and finally came up with this. But the workflow was clunky and the whole process left me feeling like I used to be smart. And now I'm just stupid. You can view the full workflow in two parts of my sister channel, the Video Shop Long Play, which I'm thinking of renaming Adam's Humiliating Animation Failures. I've never heard that one before. That's really fun. You can also download the project file for free from my gum road. So back to these sketch and tune shapes. A few weeks ago, I figured the PTSD had worn off enough to revisit the project file and see if I could streamline the process into something useful. I wouldn't say the project file is a car crash exactly, more like a demolition derby. Derby? Derby? Derby. Chaos, but organised chaos. <laughs> I wasn't worried about anyone else jumping on this file, and sometimes you're so in the zone, you step back and realise you've named one of your comps stroke back balls. Since working on this, I've looked at how you can add a stroke to animated isometric elements in After Effects, and I've done a couple of tutorials exploring C4D Renderer. So I thought, well, surely I'll have more luck coming up with an elegant procedural solution. But guess what? Welcome to the real world, where most of the time, things don't go your fucking way. I'm not an expert on what goes on under the hood with After Effects, but I think basically the problem is After Effects isn't built in a way which lends itself to this particular look with 3D elements, because it's not a 3D program. It's like trying to make a Terminator play the violin. Yeah, I don't have a clip for that. Oh wait, yes I do. <laughs> Here I've got some of the shapes and I've added a light and adjustment layer with fine edges to create a stroke look. And that stroke could be isolated and made thicker or thinner, but it's not very neat. I want clean vector lines like this. So this setup that I'm about to walk you through, I think could be good for geometric, isometric star animations. Anything involving the word metric, basically. I can imagine a pop art style, continuous motion loop type thing working quite well with these assets. One of the drawbacks is that you lose the 3D interactivity. So these shapes are 2D pre-comps. You're not going to be able to fly a camera around this scene. But I'm planning on doing an animation myself using these assets, so hopefully I'll post something soon which shows a good way to use them. Okay, let's get started. Okay, so this is the tube comp, and all the comps are set up in a similar way with subtle differences. So we'll look at a couple of others as well. But we've got a master comp up here and pre comps in this pre comps folder. So if we go into the main comp, it's two and a half thousand by two and a half thousand pixels. Um, but you can amend that if you want to make it bigger. Uh, so this is classic 3D. And the way that I built the strokes is a combination of using two strokes. So the bottom layer is the fill and color. And then we've got a top stroke. And if we zoom in and then go to a control now, just bump it up. So this uses stroke effect on solids and everything's expression linked. So if we go back here and change the radius to say 800, that's gonna change it in this comp as well. This uses just a stroke. And if you know about strokes on 3D layers and After Effects, you'll know if you've got continuous rasterization checked, it'll maintain a consistent stroke width rather than appearing thinner when you rotate it. That's the stroke for the front. Uh, so we've got top and bottom, and I've got the bottom turned off, which is the hacky part. If you wanted to rotate this, you could keyframe it on and off. And then the side, creating the stroke around the edges here, that uses layer style stroke. So it's looking at the alpha of the object. So the thing that's not ideal, I guess, about this is if we zoom in, those strokes are doubled up and you can very subtly see here that they are. So this isn't a perfect solution. Drop it to two, it's a bit more noticeable there. 
but when you zoom out and if this is imported into another project and scaled down chances are you're not going to see that so we can turn the light in on using this checkbox here so that that activates the uh, spotlight here and I very quickly put a spotlight on the idea is to give you these and go in do what you want tweak them and improve them I've sort of worked on them as much as I can be bothered to if I'm honest such a smart piece of equipment and a wreck like me trying to run it but they could definitely be sort of tweaked and improved upon the posterize effect is just a, an adjustment layer in here with posterize effect looks okay but you could, could maybe add um, some noise on top of that to sort of smooth it out if you wanted to it's up to you if you've come this far maybe you're willing to come a little further so the star comp polystar similar setup main comp pre comps fill at the bottom the very hacky part of this is the stroke for the edges if we change the number of points that's going to screw it up straight away because you have to manually place this so if we go into that stroke edges comp and if we go to the front view what you need to do is go in and manually place it where it needs to be and there's only one but depending on how many you've got and the radiuses you may need more than one if we go in and change the radius so we actually need two now so you need to duplicate it and move the second one but for this bit here i am sure that there's a way of using expressions to have a large number of these stroke edges and expression linked in a way where it after effects can calculate where they need to be depending on the radius and the number of points i just can't be bothered to do that but i bet there's some clever people out there that could again another another example of where these project files can just be taken and improved upon very upsetting so you could add more expression controls to this master control null here if you want to so i've added an orient to it and animated that because these rotation values give it a, an isometric view along with the camera z distance if we change that that brings the perspective back like i said it's a hacky rig so certain things with this rig are easier to do than others so if you just want to extrude something scale it move it uh, those things are pretty easy but if you want to if you want to rotate it like i've done here i've had to keyframe on and off certain strokes and this rig is different uh, slightly different to the other ones i'd say it's a case of taking the rigs having a look playing around with the controls seeing what works for you i'll include these animated files on the gumroad as well the way the shapes extrude is down to the c4d renderer so they extrude out in one direction if you want the extrusion centered like this you'll need to tweak the rig first off we'll go into the fill comp and on the main shape select the position and separate the dimensions then enable expressions on the z position and we'll pick whip it to the extrusion depth then at the end add divide by two and at the beginning add a minus copy that expression now in our stroke side comp we'll just paste that same expression onto the z position of the cylinder there if we drag the timeline window of our top stroke across we can easily expression link to our main fill comp and we'll just link the z position of our stroke layer to that of the main fill cylinder and this is more or less the same process that you'll need to do with the other shapes give or take the odd comp or two if you want to create a scene with more than one of the same shape but with different values you'll need a duplicate file for each shape 
you might be able to use something like True Comp Duplicator. Uh, I haven't got it, so I haven't tried this. So the way I've done it is to copy the AE file, in this case the cylinder, and call it O2, and then you'll just need to go into the file and, and rename every comp O2 instead of O1. If you want to scene with multiple shapes, here's how I'd go about setting up the master controls. Drag in your AE files. In this case, we'll just have two cylinders. Then we'll drag them both into a new comp called shapes, imaginatively enough, and scale them and move them side by side so we can see what's going on. First, we want a null with some master controls. So we can copy it from either of our cylinder comps and paste it into the shapes comp. Then we'll delete some of these controls, so we're just left with the ones we want to affect all the shapes. It's pretty much just the stroke controls and posterized checkboxes. Then if we drag our cylinder 01 comp over here, we can expression link those controls to our master shapes comp. and we'll just turn off these checkboxes to make sure that works. Next we'll add a slider to the O1 cylinder. And name it stroke width. Then enable expressions and make sure we can see the scale. And we'll write X equals and pick whip to the X scale. Then add a semicolon. Then on the next line, type Y equals, then pick whip to the stroke amount slider around the master control, then another semicolon. Then on the final line, we'll type open square bracket 100 divided by X, close square bracket times Y. And we can now copy and paste that to any other shape in the scene. Doesn't work yet. We just need to go back into our cylinder one comp and link the stroke control to that stroke width slider. So that's all set up for the first cylinder. We can now copy all those amended expression controls to the other cylinder. I main also, I need all the controls to be in the same order. The only thing we need to amend is the stroke value. At the moment it's linking to the other cylinder, so we'll just change the expression here from O1 to O2. The handy thing about doing this with the stroke is that you can now scale it without messing up the stroke width, while still maintaining all the other mask controls. And that's it for now. There's some stuff I definitely haven't fully covered. This is more of a quick intro. The rig for this animation, for example. I'm just gonna include the AE projects in the Gumroad and you can dive in and have a look for yourselves if it's of interest. Yell in the comments if you've got any questions. Don't actually yell. Thanks for sticking with me though. And I hope even a small part of this was useful. Thanks for watching, see you again soon.